Hi, welcome back. Uh, as I promised, I'm going to show you how I make these. Uh, these are called the Zwick. Uh, it's a design from Emma Gerowatz uh, here in Croatia. She's a designer and I make these for her. Uh, now, last year I made 100 of these and this time we're going to make 200 of these. And here I have uh, 40 and uh, one is back here. So 160 to go, uh, plus a few extra. Uh, now this one is already oiled. Uh, um, it's a, a practice piece uh, which sort of brings back the muscle memory uh, for the rest of them and uh, these have a lovely concept behind them uh, if you can see they just barely stand up on its own um, and if I just lightly blow over them they fall over and uh, you can see where I'm going with these these are shot glasses and uh, uh, in uh, Croatia it's a sort of tradition to drink like it's called rakia uh, could be like moonshine maybe in, in uh, America uh, something like that a whiskey bourbon doesn't matter what you put inside but the the concept is the same that bottoms up uh, drink it while it's empty until it's empty sorry and uh, so that's what I'm going to make here and uh, you'll see I'll show you a little game that I like to do um, uh, when I have uh, multiple items like this to turn so I'll position you at the lathe and uh, we'll set off uh, so here we are at the lathe uh, this kind of blanks I like to prepare I can get two cups out of them and um, I still have a little bit extra so just in case if I have a catch or anything like that I still have place to move and still get two, oops, two cups out of them out of this piece. Um, now uh, I can make roughly uh, from 8 to 10 uh, cups in an hour. Um, now that depends obviously if I have to prepare uh, the sandpaper or uh, have to sharpen just I'm not in a hurry um, but still I want to make these as productive as I can. Uh, so these just go in a chuck like this for the first step and uh, let's say if I have uh, today to spend like four hours making these uh, I would prepare 20 of blanks like this uh, the way I'll show you now so this is pretty square in and uh, I do this with a skew big one inch skew So I'm almost round here. Oops. And I like to do the, the end and I mark the diameter which is roughly 47 mil and that's bang on. And I make a little tenon here. Uh, you'll see later um, why I need this. So this can now be flipped around. So I just make th this step for let's say 20 pieces at a time. Or if I'm making these the whole day then obviously more. So just see if that's running okay. Yeah. And now the same procedure. I can go like this. Screw up the end here. This is actually the top of one of the cups. And here as well I'll mark the diameter or just check at least where I am. And that's pretty close. And I can set that in. And now just connect the dots here. This is now cylinder ready to be used. Actually here is a little bit fatter. I can go with the bevel, with the long point down. And this is now ready blank to be used. 
So I repositioned the camera uh, so you can see a little bit better on the hollowing, although it's a quite cramped space here so you won't be able to see inside um, uh, without getting in my way of movement and uh, so uh, just to say um, uh, when I uh, prepare the blanks like this I prepare one step on all of them so as you saw here uh, where the tenon is up here um, I prepare uh, on all of the blanks the tenon like that and then I would set these aside and grab one by one uh, as needed here uh, when I make the cups. So I hope that makes sense um, sort of with uh, pro process of uh, how I go about this and uh, that maybe help you uh, with your batch of whatever you are doing. So here I have the marks. Uh, actually for different kind of jobs that I do quite often. So um, the, the second here mark actually is for the Madero cup, vacuum cups. Uh, this one here is for these cups and uh, I have multiple of these. So up to that mark. Now this back hollowing that I'm going to show you now uh, is the, uh, the technique that I learned from Richard Raffen, my mentor and um, it's really the best way I know to hollow this in a hurry uh, well actually not in a hurry but the fastest way to hollow and get to the bottom of this hole and then finish the shape and I'll make one like this in more modern way uh, explaining what I'm doing and then the second one I'll show you what I was uh, talking about in the beginning of the video a little game that I like to do so Now this may vibrate a little bit because it's a little bit uh, further from the chuck. And that's the bottom of the hole. So that was a few seconds. So the rest goes up now and uh, this is the scraper I like to use. Um, it's a symmetric curve but it's sort of design curve for just this. Although I use this when I have to or when I have the need for it obviously for other jobs. I leave here a wall around 4 mil. Now if you're not certain you don't stick your hand inside, you can break a finger like that if you don't know where to grab or to feel. So I have a little lump. Okay, the curve is nice, but I have a lump in the middle, so I just remove that from the bottom and that's okay. So now I repositioned the camera so you can see the profile here, how it's developed. I use a smaller skew to just bring a little curve here on the top. I have a set uh, length and I use a parting tool and I go around one mil of the line. Oops. then go on the line and split it in half and I go around one third of the diameter here and now with a smaller skew I can shape the, the profile. I don't use any templates, um, I tend to visualize what I'm doing here and uh, uh, it may not be the perfect uh, like uh, outside shape to all of them, but it's pretty close and the, the more you do stuff like this, you get better at it, and, uh, as the Richard says. So now there is a camera in my way, but... So of course, uh, just before the finish cut, the, the camera shut off those eight minutes of in shooting in 4K, uh, so I'll show you one more time. So I find the the point of the sh shorter point where it grabs, and just 
go lightly. Like so. And uh, here is the important part. I hope you'll see uh, this little step here. That's uh, the first plunge with the uh, parting tool. And this is now where I, up to that, I can place the parting tool and I'm in the same height, height-wise, uh, when I split the line, if you remember, a few steps back. So, that way I don't change the height. And now I just plunge in until I have around 10 mil diameter uh, spindle holding the, the cup. And I want to just a little bit more curve at the bottom. And this slightly vibrates, so... Just a little bit lighter, but so we'll send this now. And uh, actually I'll reposition the camera a little bit. I finish it off with a scotch dry pad, a little burnishing. I'll just turn off the dust extractor, just part this off. And I always part these off so I have a little bit extra here. I'd rather sand this away, this little material here here then uh, to have a hole here so you can see this one is nicely done once the oil gets in it's super super nice you can see the inside nicely and clean and uh, the outside so the game in question is whenever I have uh, multiple pieces like this to make I like to tie myself and uh, with each one I try to beat my previous time. Uh, I believe my personal best on this one is 5 minutes and uh, I believe 40 seconds or 43 seconds something like that so I'll try to beat that and uh, you'll see now here uh, why the tenon here is uh, so I can grab it like so and still utilize all of the blank here and I like to have a lip here because I'm doing a quite um, aggressive hollowing so I have a, a more support and let's see if that's running true almost yeah now it's running true I'll chew it up anyway so so that's uh, tight and uh, we'll set off so start out with a big skew Show it up. Show up the end here. Start the hole. Drill the hole. And now the hollowing, which is really fast and furious. So that's the bottom done, so we just need to finish scrape it. Now this is the, the place where I lose the most of the time. Because I don't cut all the blanks necessarily in a straight grain. So sometimes they can be oscillation in the grain. So that's done. And again, small skew. Round over the top. Mark the length. And parting tool.
and when I'm close to this here on the bottom I like to make a chamfer here just easier on the sanding one more cut to get the shape that I like down to 10 mil Now this is slightly faster than I would normally work, so I'll turn on the dust extractor now. I work a little bit faster now, and I do this, especially on these kind of batches, I do it periodically when I compete with myself, so I hope that makes sense. It amuses me when I'm working like this and uh, one eighty a little knob in the very bottom of the pole. bit of paper this is where I lose time now to forty Should have prepared the same paper. here they don't say, say uh, sand quite well and part it off there we go ah. so that's five minutes 42 seconds and uh, yeah it turned out quite nice you can see a little knob here but once the oil gets in uh, you won't notice that at all so and uh, you can see very little waste here so that's pretty much what I, I lost on, on a blank so, uh, so uh, as you saw um, Although that maybe look like frantic, uh, but it's not, and uh, I don't turn on every single um, cup like that. So trying to go as fast as it possible, I maybe go every tenth and uh, tie myself. Um, that way, I'm uh, uh, keeping track of where I'm losing maybe time. And uh, as you saw, I lost on this one. I lost time on the same paper, a few seconds and a few seconds there, and. Uh, if you prepare those stuff I can be a little bit faster. My goal is to maybe go under five minutes uh, by the end of this batch of 200 so uh, we'll see. Uh, now uh, like I said this is a great um, thing to to do uh, whenever you're making this stuff like multiple or dozen stuff like this. Um, 
just um usually uh, usually it takes around six minutes maybe six and a half tops to make these at more leisure way and i have the stereo music in the background and uh, just enjoy the the process and you can't go faster than you can so um just enjoy the process enjoy and uh, you can only make one by one and uh, just keep that in mind as well so don't rush uh, and don't do always the stuff that i do like I showed you here you don't have to run around the lathe like this um, but I, I like to do it occasionally just to like I said maybe every tenth of the cup uh, I'll I'll test my time and uh, yeah I hope you like this and uh, uh, hope a few little tips along the way help you out on your uh, journey with uh, this kind of production run let's say